Okay, I don't remember where I left off in my video series with this, but I got it home. I think I flew the boom around for it, for the camera a little bit. Everything seemed to work good from the rear controls. Uh, this thing had a remote control mounted on the back to where it had radio, radio remote, where you could have a remote, oops, excuse me, remote pow, uh, controller attached to your, off your shoulders. And it had a radio receiver up there that would take those commands. And as you see, it's got a bucket up here, so it's got boom tip controls also. And I assume they never used the boom tip controls a whole lot, probably used the radio. I can see where this thing, using it for trees, it's going to have its advantage because you stand on this platform back here. And I'll go ahead and unrack that real quick. Doing it one-handed. So you stand on the platform. You stand in here, this control's fixed. So if you're over here working even off to the side, you're pretty good. If you're working up, let's say if like we back up to a tree and working, it's gonna be hard for the operator to sort of work that. You kind of have to turn around and use the controls one at a time. So I can see that being a disadvantage. Or I wish I had the radio remotes where you could have your operator standing on the ground watching the work behind him because we probably will. We'll either work off the corner or straight behind because that's where this thing has got its advantage over like a like the big uh, 60, 70 foot cranes. They're cranes in the middle. It's mounted in the middle so you automatically lose some reach off the back. If you can get up to the side, you've still got good reach. And their beds are usually longer too. So even though the sticks are longer on the big cranes, they have a bit of a disadvantage because they're mounted up front. That said, this one has a bit of a disadvantage because the controls doesn't have the riding controls. And I was gonna take it to a job the other day I couldn't get the upper controls to work. And with the radio gone, I was wondering, all right, probably related to the radio not being there is, I called around to a local mechanic that I used to work with in the fleet shop that dealt with these big trucks. And he told me, he wasn't sure. So he told me to call Alltech. And you can call Alltech and they've got a troubleshooting line. I actually got into them real quick. They helped me troubleshoot this thing within about an hour. I wasn't on the phone within an hour, but we were uh, on the phone for a while. So the radio box would mount right here, I believe. Or does it mount? I think it actually mounts maybe on this cover. Can't recall, that's the rear cover. Either way. These harnesses here stick out the back. Also, these harnesses stick out the back. That's what the radio box connects to. Them tucked up there. You got this upper multiplexer that those harnesses tie into. This is where the upper boom tip controls did tie into. They're this big gray line right here. I'll back off. See, they come from the upper controls down this. And I think you've got five wires in there and I do like how they do this everything's pretty well labeled out so this was an empty slot or no this actually was tied in I took that back yeah this white connector here on con let me see con one of this upper multiplexer was tied into con four so I pulled that, and that's what they had me do. They had me pull that, take the upper boom tip controls, and take it down here to CON4 is where it was plugged into CON2. So that, if you run into a situation where, like I am, the company that owned it before, which is our local power company, took the radio, with, kept the radio, that's how you can get the upper boom tip controls to work. It took me about an hour, because once I got off the phone with them, even on the phone, I couldn't get it to work. One thing with these on the interlock, there's a couple lights down here. You got five volt, 12 volt and interlock. 
So you've got, I don't know if you can see up there, there's four levers and basically a, a safety switch or an emergency stop switch. That red plunger, you pull it back, that enables the controls up there. So that interlock, there's an interlock communication coming down through this wire. And that's sort of the first thing to make sure. And then there are other wires I think are communication wires for the upper controls. So the key was to make sure the interlock was worked. So if you enable that and pull a function at the same time, you should see the interlock light up. And we were, but the functions still weren't working. And I think that's either a loose connection or there is a multiplexer up there, I was told. I haven't dug into that yet. I was able to fiddle around, shake things, and I did get it to work for a short period of time, but it was intermittent. So I'll have to figure that out because this would be a handy truck to have for a little short jobs. This truck's advantage, it's got 32 foot of stick with the bucket and I got an extra eight foot on top. So I could go out uh, 40 feet of stick of sheave, but I can only go 32 on the bucket. That would be handy if you had a job where you were reaching up under something low, but you still needed to be 10, 15 foot off the ground. As for that one, your upper boom has to stand up to get that bucket to go out. And then that bucket will still run out in an arc. So it can't reach out real low to the side. So this one would be handy. I didn't buy it for that reason, but it was just a nice to have. That also explains why this truck went so cheap at the auction. Although I don't know about that because the other truck next to it had the auger and had the radio. I could tell by some pictures and video that I had that I'll show you guys. It had the radio with it. That's about a $10,000 option. So it still doesn't explain the Delta of 27, 28,000 versus about 8,000, but explains part of it, I guess. So uh, that's going to do it for this truck. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you're having similar issues, hope you learned something. And uh, like and subscribe. There'll be more to come. Thanks.